Welcome to the start of Season 11 of Regen Rovers, where we will be competing in the English Championship for the first time. This looks special, doesn't it? After two successive promotions, Regen Rovers are in the second tier of English football and we're going to do our best to try and stay up this season. As always, we're predicted to finish bottom. We're 750-1 to one to win the league. This is nothing new to us. Every single season we've been predicted to be relegated. However, I think the step up between League One and the Championship is the greatest step up so far. This is going to be a massive challenge. There's some quality teams in this division. There are some teams with lots of Premier League experience. Look at that top three. Leeds United, West Brom, Fulham, the, the favourites to go up. We've got Watford in there. Preston have been a yo-yo team between the Premier League and the Championship in this universe. We've got Palace in there. There are some massive clubs. And we're going to be fighting for our lives. We really are. I, I can't see it any other way. I'll have to be honest. But maybe we thought that last year. And of course, we won League One, so you never know, there might be a massive shock. Now, I will introduce the new transfers to you, and also I'm going to reintroduce you to all the squad members, because some of you maybe haven't watched loads of episodes recently, and you may want to just be updated on, on who's currently in the first team squad, and maybe the, the reserves and under-18s as well. Now, pre-season, decent, pre decent pre-season, first game of the championship season for us will be today against Brentford away from home. So I hope you're looking forward to that. That'll be at the end of today's episode. Uh, we actually we lost against Man United in the first game of preseason, but we managed to score two goals. We, we lost against Hearts as well, but we beat the teams we expected to beat. We beat Morecambe, Darlington, Chesterfield, thrashed by Spurs, beat Bath. But, I mean, I was trying to play some big teams to, to bring in some, some money. So that's why I took on Man United and Spurs. Filled out the stadium. That is our stadium capacity. Financially, we're still in a, a decent position. We, we've got money in the bank. And that's important because our training and youth facilities will be improved. Uh, they're currently being improved. And they'll be finished on the 14th of September. I'm hoping we don't get into, go into debt before that point. Because if we do, inevitably, they'll be cancelled. And to be honest... We're going to have to keep improving these because it, this is going to be crap. All right, those facilities are going to be really bad because at the moment we've got pretty bad facilities, I think. We've currently got poor youth facilities and poor training facilities. So it's probably going to go up to below average or something like that. We have broken our transfer record twice in pre-season and we've signed some, some decent players that I'm quite happy with. Now the first player to come in broke the transfer record which was held by Toby Brazil. It was about seven and a half thousand pounds. Alan Stevenson has actually come in from League One Charlton. He was at, they were actually relegated last season which I know doesn't bode well but I think he is an upgrade on Dickie Strutton and I wanted to find a better player to play in that defensive midfield role. Dickie Strutton will be back up of course, we've also got a Wusu as well. But I quite like the look of Alan Stevenson. Next up was actually a goalkeeper. Now, I know I said David Okoye will be first choice. And he will be. He will be first choice. But I wanted to bring in a young goalkeeper with potential. Just in case Okoye can't step up to the championship. Which is a distinct possibility. I will show you him in a minute when I go through the, the entire squad. But you guys fed back to me that you think we, we should stick with David Okoye's first choice but have a backup option who's possibly similar, maybe slightly better, who can step in. Now, Glenn Martin, he's only 18. He started at Chelsea. I like the look of him. Technically, in terms of his ability, he is currently better than David Okoro. Half style better, and he's got potential. So he might be the future goalkeeper of Regen Rovers, for, but for the time being, Okoro will be first choice. Next up, now I'm desperately trying to find a right midfielder because unfortunately, Wayne Burns has left the club. You'll have noticed... A lack of certain names that you may remember. The likes of Matthew Averson, Kevin Casey, Wayne Burns. There are a few players, Mark Cole. I did stick them on the Region Rovers Twitter, the players that had left, the, the prominent players that left the club. So go and check that out if you, if you want to know. But Wayne Burns refused to sign a new contract. He still hasn't signed for another club, which is annoying because I haven't been able to find a right midfielder better than Wayne Burns. The first to come in was actually Stuart Cochran. He joined from Championship Club Birmingham. He was on loan in the National League last year. Didn't play particularly well. But he was the best midfield, right midfielder at the time that wanted to join for me. Now you'll look at these signings and think they're crap, Paul. How on earth are you going to stay up in the Championship? 
I literally put in millions of bids for, it won't show here, but I put in millions of bids for Premier League young players and none of them want to join me because unfortunately, although our reputation has gone up to two stars, it's still a long way below Championship, League One, some League Two clubs have better reputation than us. So teams just don't play it, sorry, players don't want to join us. And that is the issue. So Stuart Cochran, he's only 18 though, so he's got potential, he's, he's fast. He can dribble, he can cross. That's all I need from my winger. He's decent turn weight, teamwork and okay work rate. You know, he, he's all right. And hopefully he'll be, be okay for us. Next up, Elliot Dix. Now, I, I just... I couldn't avoid this transfer. I just couldn't. We've got Lucas Long. We've got Long Dicks at the back. Amazing. And Curry. Long Dicks Curry. <laughs> just had to just had to do it, didn't I? Unfortunately, we won't see uh, Long Dicks as our centre back partnership today because Long is injured. But you will see Elliot Dix, who's joined from ch uh, Championship Club Norwich. He actually started at Wolves, made one appearance in the Championship last year. wasn't particularly good. But he is our best centre-back on paper. And I think he looks decent. And only 10k, not bad at all for him. Next up is our record-breaking transfer. Howard Flanagan has come in from West Brom. And I think he will make a big difference to the team. You will notice a massive jump up in quality, I think, between him, Toby Brazil, Perry Miles, Obusu, the other midfielders we've had. He's got 15 on passing, 14 on vision, physically good, technique, he's, he's great. The only issue, and I think the reason why he's, he's, although he's our most expensive transfer, the reason why he's fairly cheap, he's coming from uh, West Ham. he's not played amazingly well throughout his career, throughout his short career so far, but I think the aggression may let him down. But he fits in with the Region Rovers philosophy. We're, we're used to aggressive players, aren't we? And I think he will be a big difference in that central midfield role. Now, he'd rather play on sort of a Mazar or a deep line for playmaker. We will stick with the attacking central midfielder to start with. Uh, but we might change that role. We might adapt it over time. But he is a big fly. I'm expecting big things, though, because he's on a lot of money for, for us. Not for the championship, really. And he's a big transfer. So I'm hoping Howard Flanagan will step up and perform for us. And two more transfers, two free transfers. Adam Pearce, just to add a fourth choice centre-back to our team. We've got Dix, Long and Curry. We've then got Adam Pearce, who will be that fourth choice. Matthew Averson, Kevin Casey, they've left the club. We needed to replace those players. I don't think he'll play a huge amount of football in the in the Championship. But it's a long old season with the cup competitions as well. We need, we need backup. And, and last, I was desperately trying to find a right winger. Austin Tilly, or Ty Tilly, I think. I... I don't know. I don't. I'm not ma massively confident about this guy, but I was just desperate for some extra players. I've just. I've had so. I've spent so much time trying to get loan players in, get free players in. Either they don't want to join, or they want too much money. Uh, no, I've got no players on loan. No one has wanted to join players that I only went for players that would improve the team that's the thing there's no point loaning a player that's going to sit there on the bench which is we've often done there was no point doing that so I really thought start the summer we would have to focus on loan signings this year but no one wanted to join us so this is the team we have and I'm going to go through it quite quickly David Okor and goal, still our number one. Legend, most appearances for the club. Glenn Martin, backup goalkeeper. Gareth Hancock, probably first choice right back. Maybe pass more will still 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 the place from him. Elliot Dix, first choice centre back. Adam Pearce, backup centre back. Joey Curry, possibly first choice centre back. He's battling for that place with Lucas Long. Dickie Strutton, backup defensive midfielder. Lucas Long, possibly first choice centre back. He's battling that with Joey Curry. Niall Whitehead, first choice left back. Keneal Passmore, could be first choice right back. He's currently playing at the Olympics for Jamaica. Samuel Wasini, backup left back, backup right back. Can just fill in. Club legend, made so many appearances for the club. Alan Stevenson, our new first choice defensive midfielder. Howard Flanagan, our new first choice central midfielder. Perry Miles. Club legend as well. Second highest number of appearances for the club. Suspended for the first match due to a red card. 
standard. Gasarusu played so many games for the club, will just fill in when required. Where's Honor? Left midfielder, second choice left midfielder. Toby Brazil, backup central midfielder. Stuart Cochran, right midfielder. Haven't decided if he's first choice or second choice. Austin Tilly, likewise not sure first choice, second choice, just depends how they perform. John Patanama, first choice left midfielder. He's out for the first game though, unfortunately. Ryan Curtis, he will definitely start up front alongside Mark Ball. What a player, great season last year, 30 goals. Grant Hunt, backup striker, can fill in on the right as well. Mark Ball, our legendary forward, he's injured. For a couple weeks, he's gonna miss the start of the championship, championship season, an absolute blow. Really is, he got injured just a couple days ago. Really unlucky for Mark Ball. And Ogachukwu Agu, club legend, all-time top goal scorer. He's still at the club. He's going to be a backup striker for us and play in the cup competitions. The under-23s then, Shea Skinner, third choice goalkeeper. Still at the club. Mosh Jan, came through the youth academy, related to... Josh, man, you remember him. Rob Halliday came through our youth academy. He's made the second highest number of appearances from any player that has come through our youth academy. Sampson, still at the club as well. These players, they're all on non-contracts. I'm not letting them go. We need a few backups here in this team. Ben Ball came through the youth academy as well. He's just a backup right back. Shaw Walker, club legend. So many appearances from him. Still at the club at the age of 27. Ray Rigg, 26 years old. Started at the club, the only original left from the, uh, the the first signings that Jack Young made when he formed Regen Rovers. Look at him. Started on day one of the club and he's still here. Charlie Farrer, another youth academy player. Tyler Cherrett has been promoted from the under 18s to the under 23s. And Morgan Forks scored the most goals in our first ever season at the club. He's been here since the first season as well after joining on loan. Bit of a club icon, really. And then the under-18s, Lee Bridges. Has a little bit of potential as a goalkeeper. John Shepard, another goal, young goalkeeper. Rory Hunt, maybe related to Grant Hunt. Centre-back. Lewis Young, is he related to Jack Young? Maybe. Dominic Thompson, striker. Russell Brooks, right midfielder, central midfielder. I don't think any of these players are going to go into big things, I'm afraid. Jeff Dickens up front. 12 and finishing, not bad. And Dylan Davies. An attacking midfielder. I love Region Rovers. I love the club. I love the players. But what about you? What do you think? What's going to happen this season? Where are we going to finish? Which new transfers are going to have the biggest impact? Are there any players that have been around for a long time that will make a massive impact in the championship? Obviously, Mark Ball surely will. When he's back from injury in a couple of weeks, will hopefully hit the ground flying. He did that last year in League One. It is a big blow that he's injured for the first day of the season because he's such an important player, but we're going to make do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So how do we compare to the rest of the league then? Our average age is much below the average age of the championship, 22 to 25. Our oldest player is in the first team is David Okoro, legend of the club. He's now 26 years old. Looking at the comparison then, let's go through, look at all positions. We've actually got very good aggression, predictably. I mean, we're great at the aggression, but we've got the worst decisions, worst passing, worst, what's that? Work rate and teamwork, not great. Goalkeeper wise, it's okay, but we've got the worst handling, aerial reach, one-on-ones, throwing. Defensively, there's four things that are the worst there, but strength is okay, 13th best, jumping reach, 14th best. Midfield, we've actually got the eighth best tackling, but we've got the worst long shots, vision, and technique. Attacking wise, we've got great finishing, that's what we've always been good at. Third best in the championship, but we've got the worst long shots, heading and pace, despite the pace of Mark Ball, strangely. Physically, terrible. Mentally, terrible and technically terrible oh my how are we gonna do this i have no idea this is the biggest challenge yet by a long way i still i feel like i'm gonna have to adapt the tactic and make it more defensive i've currently got it on balance for the time being we'll just see how it gets on against brentford today the instructions haven't changed a huge amount i have gone back to uh the, the more direct higher tempo style of play trying to hit teams on the break it's gonna be so Gonna, oh, I am relying on a good tactic. I'm relying on the dynamics of this team. There's a lot of players that have been here a long time. There are there's a big core social group. We've got the new signings down here, but everyone else is all bunched together, happy as, as anyone can be. Oh, it's going to be tough though, isn't it? So our first ever game in the championship will be today against Brentford away from home. 
We're going to be the underdogs for every single game this season, surely. Now, the team I am putting out, we've got some new signings. We've got Elliot Dix in there. We've got Alan Stevenson. We've got Cochrane. I'm going with him on the right-hand side. We've got Howard Flanagan. But the biggest blow of all is the loss of Mark Ball. Massive. Player of the season last year. Voted by you guys as well on Twitter. Comprehensively beating everyone else. Desperately disappointed that he can't feature today. So Grant Hunt will be leading the line up front alongside Ryan Curtis. Now I have officially changed this to a deep line forward. I did that towards the end of last season. It seemed to work quite well. So we're going to go with it. So this is the journey we made up to West London today to take on Brentford FC. This is a massive day for the club, an exciting day for the club. Let's have a look at the Brentford team then. Josh Cullen immediately stands out, ex-West Ham player. Up front, they've got Zaharia, a Hungarian international striker. Looks decent on the right-hand side. Stephen Hunt looks better than the wingers we have, to be honest. Tavernier on the left, Marcus Tavernier. Oh, it's a good team. It's a good team, O'Reilly. They're definitely better than us, and... It's a bit of a blow we don't have Patanama. We're going to be playing Wes Honor. Look at the difference between him and their wingers. And Cochrane on the right-hand side. He's got pace. Hopefully he can make a difference. Oh, missing Mark Ball. It's a massive blow. But hopefully Ryan Curtis can step up, step up. And Grant Hunt as well. Let's go for that. Team talk. Speak to the midfield. We need Howard Flanagan to, to perform miracles for us. I've actually told him to ease off the tackles because of his aggression. Hopefully that will make a difference. Let's get on with this then. We're at the Brentford Commun Community Stadium, as it's called on the game. Their new stadium, of course. And Brentford head that away, and that's the end of that first highlight. I think we'll put it on extended, actually, for the first ever game in the Championship. We've won a corner, which Wes Honor will take. Probably pass it short to Gareth Hancock. Crosses it in. Stevenson wins the header. It's headed away, though. And here comes Josh Cullen, knocking it up the pitch. Are they going to hit us on the counter here? Here's Zaharia, crossing it into Hunt. Oh, it's gone out wide, though. Hopefully we can regroup here. Here's Lard, or Laird. Crossed in, headed over the bar. Will Okoro be able to perform in the championship? Will any of our players be able to perform in the championship? At the moment, we're holding Brentford out. But it's a corner to Brentford now. Whipped in. Oh, Pacey. Headed away by Joey Curry. And that's nodded clear by Grant Hunt. Couldn't find Curtis, though. And here's Elise. Back to Laird. We know if we win the ball back, we can break. We have the ability to hit teams on the break with our long, direct style of play. But here come Brentford. Josh Cullen has the shot and it's 1-0 to Brentford. The first goal we've conceded in the championship. And it's a great strike from the ex-West Ham central midfielder. Long shots. Long shots. I mean, so many long shots we've conceded over the years. And we often keep teams out. We prevent them from having um, clear-cut chances. But the long shots just fly in. And it's really annoying. I think we've got nothing to lose. We might as well go attacking in the second half. It's a free kick. Josh Cullen to take it. Smashes into the wall. It's been fairly equal though. And that's encouraging. If we had Mark Ball today, maybe he'd be able to make a difference. At half time, I'm just going to sort of say unlucky, I suppose. Unlucky. I mean, that's fair fair enough. I think they've, they've gained confidence. We're going to go attacking. Why not? Howard Flanagan not having the best debut. I mean, it's tempting to just play him in a role he prefers. Like Roman Playmaker, something like that. Why not? Give it a go, let him roam around the centre. Although he's the only central midfielder, so I don't know if that's a good thing. I might give that a go at some point. We won't experiment already. I know I'm the tinker man, but I can't go crazy. I just want to say thank you for the support on the series so far. It has been magnificent. I've really loved it. And I know I've not uploaded a huge amount of other content recently. I've been focusing on this. And you know I've, I've already said I've been quite busy with, with my job and, and other stuff in life. So that's why I've kind of just focused my attention on this. A project I'm really happy with, as they have a goal disallowed there. And I'm just enjoying it. I'm loving, I'm just loving playing this, this save. I really am. And I'm glad that plenty of you have enjoyed the series so far. And maybe it is only just the start. You know, the championship, we might be stuck here for a while. We might get relegated, of course. That's a distinct possibility. Now I'm going to make a change. Up front, do we bring a go on? Do we see if we can score in the championship? I'm tempted. I'm going to bring Austin Tilly on for his debut. Oh, he's an inv I, I didn't research him properly. He's a left-footed player. He's an inverted wing. Oh, my. Why don't I look at this properly? I'm an idiot. He's not uh, an inverted winger. Do we give that a go? Maybe. It might make a difference. You never know. Let's, let's, let's try it out. And I am going to chuck a go up front. He's going to play as a poacher. How did I not see he was left-footed and inverted winger? I just... Oh. 
Maybe Cochrane will be our first choice after all. Suarez, their goalkeeper, knocks it up to Laird. They're just playing it from the back here. It's not long. It's over everyone. This is a chance. I'm not entirely sure what we were doing there. That was far too easy. The game's over. We're not getting back into this. Okoro probably should have come out there. I'm not... I don't really know what he was doing, I'll be honest. And defensively, it was poor. We just let the ball go over. And we've got a deep defensive line, so there's no excuses there. But Okoro... Why didn't he go to the near post? That just doesn't make any sense. A tough start to life in Le in Championship. Sorry, I was about to say League One. We're out the we're out League One. We've we've accomplished that task. One more sub to make. And Howard Flanagan, six point four is disappointing. We're gonna bring on Toby Brazil. A record transfer. Disappointing debut. Keeping it on attacking. You never know. We might be able to get a goal. Here come Brentford. It's back to Josh Cullen. Can't believe we're playing a goo in the first championship match. I didn't think it would come down to this. It's 3-0 Zaharia. Poor game from Whitehead, our left back, signed in January. I have tried to improve every position on the pitch. Honestly, I have. I've looked out for loan players. And these are the best players I could sign. And I, I'm kind of relishing a battle this year. I don't want it to be too easy. We don't want to just fly up, do we? We've flown up through League 2 and, and 1. Maybe we want a bit of a battle this year. A bit of a challenge. Perhaps I need to adapt the tactics. Maybe we are just going to lose every game and go back straight down to League One. But we can come back stronger, can't we? It's the first day of the season. We've lost 3-0. It's a, it's a tough old start, isn't it? It really is. I mean, it's just welcome to the championship from Brentford. And I, I can't be too harsh on them, can I? can I? So at the end of today's first match, we are bottom of the championship already. But next up, we've got a winnable game against Luton Town, a team predicted to finish towards the bottom. We've then got Derby, who also finished towards the bottom last year. Colchester United in the League Cup, hopefully we can get a decent win there. And then, massive game against Leeds United. I think I'm going to show that one. And Bristol Rovers, another team we should hopefully be picking up points against. But every game is going to be tough this season. It really is. Keep the faith. We'll do this. We'll stay up. I guarantee it. That's a brave thing to say, isn't it? That is a very brave thing to say. But thank you for watching today's episode. Let me know your thoughts on this coming season in the comment section below. I think there's going to be a lot of you predicting relegation. But let's, let's just do our best. Let's just scrap. Come on. We can do this. I'll see you very soon.